You like that song, don't you? Yeah. You like the piano? Grace and peace to you from God our Father, our ever-present, our risen Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, let's begin in prayer. God, your word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path, and the kids are dancing to it and singing about it. This light, this light that gives us life in this darkness, this world of darkness. Lord, the Reformation, that goes back a long way for us, 500 years, but for you, it's a drop of water in the ocean. For you, you were moving in people's lives and opening up the doors of heaven in people's lives. And you helped them deal with their chains, their mindset, their hearts that were feeling your anger and the doom and the judgment to come. But yet, God, you revealed your glory. Through your word, you revealed your love. Teach us today to do the same. That your word would be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path throughout all our days. Here in this world, this veil of tears, this darkness, this troubled world, and into eternal life. And all God's people pray. Amen. How many people know Martin Luther? You know anything about him? What do you know about Martin Luther? Who is this guy, Martin Luther? Late 1400s, early 1500s? What do you know about him? See, that's what I like to do. They, we need to, do you know this guy? Now, when I was in seventh grade, I was clueless to who the guy was. I was a Lutheran. And by the way, Luther would, is not agreed, agreeable to everybody. If you know, hey, who are you? What are you? What kind of religion are you? I'm a Lutheran. He does not like it. Just throw, wanted to throw that out there. He says, what, a, what, what about this guy? This worm-infested, sinful man? Why would people want to be called Lutherans? Well, he couldn't put away the response that the world had about what had happened in his struggle. You see, Martin Luther was dealing with that question I said earlier, how, when we stand before God, how do we stand before God and everything is okay? That we're right before God. How can that happen? He spent most of his life, after he went quit the, law, the school of being a lawyer and he starts going to the seminary and, and the monastery and he starts learning about everything that the church is teaching him through the entire journey there and even after the journey, even after he nailed the 95 Thesis to the wall, he finally figured it out. He was in a tower and he was reading through God's Word. He was reading through the book of Romans and he came to that passage in more than one passage and now he came to these words and he goes, but now... A righteousness, a right standing before God, a righteousness before God, apart from the law, has been made known, to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is from God, and it comes through faith in Jesus Christ. To all who believe. Martin Luther struggled with his conscience, with his mind, with his lips, and with his body. And we're watching, we're showing this video. I s recorded it. It's probably one of the best ones I've watched yet. We actually, the, the district had, it, we advertised it here a while ago this summer, and we came in here, we watched it right here on the screen, and it's the same thing that's recorded on public TV, and we recorded it, now we have the confirmation kids coming over, and I started thinking maybe we should have the youth groups come over and, and other people come on over and watch this show because it is so wonderful. You know, I'm dealing with people these last two weeks, I've been dealing with individuals individually, and every one of them is struggling with the same chains that Martin Luther struggled with. You see, he was struggling with chains and these chains were holding him down and holding him back and he was caught in himself his own chains and those chains were pride I call it positive pride or negative pride better or never better they're both bad those who deal with pride of being better they're better than so and so I'm better than these people. I'm better than those people. I'm better, so when I try my best and I fail, God 
will wink, give me a wink and say everything's cool. I'll forgive you that little that you, you messed up on. A lot of people listen to that kind of pride. They think they're pretty darn good, but where they fail before God, God just goes, it's everything is okay, you're good to go. And so they have this false sense of pride, and there's a positive sense of pride that they're better than others. And if they do lack before God, God will just kind of cover the difference, difference. And that's where Jesus comes in. After all, God's loving, isn't he? And this is, this is a pride that many people live by. Well, here's another pride. I call this the negative pride. There's the better thans, and the, these people are the never betters ever. Kind of like a bar, candy bar, never better. Never betters? We eat a lot of us eat those candy bars. Meaning, we'll never be better than those people. We'll never be good enough. We'll never be lovable enough. We'll, we, we just face the reality. We're never going to be good enough. But that's as far as we go. And that's what Martin Luther was struggling with. Martin Luther actually flagellated himself. He took a whip and he'd whip himself. He'd beat himself because he felt he needed to feel bad because of how bad he was before God. And he would spend time with his father confessor and he said he'd spend days, hours, mornings, afternoon, evenings confessing to his confessor all his sins and he'd be forgiven his sins. He'd go away and he'd remember some more and he'd come right back. He goes, I forgot these. And then he'd start confessing all over again. He spent his whole life and he's going, this is it, God. I'm sick and tired of all of this. I'll never be good enough before you. He was struggling from the never better attitude. And a lot of us, we just kind of go, why try? Why care anymore? I'll never be good enough. And that's where we leave it. That's where we hang out. Both of these groups of people, one group says, I'll never be good enough. The other group says, I won't be good enough, but God will forgive me the rest. Both groups, when they stand before God, and God looks at them and His righteousness, as read today by our elder, their righteousness won't be good enough. And they will have reason and basis to be fearful and afraid. These people, definitely afraid and fearful because they know it. These people, they're going to be struggling with, well, I need just to do a little bit more. I got to be a little bit better. I got to try a little harder. I need to be sorry just a little bit more than I was before, and then I'll be okay. But each group was going to realize, like Martin Luther there's no way to be made right before God. That's where Jesus comes in. And that's where, depending on what group we're in, He flies right by us. And in our journeys and our lives, these people don't really need Him that much. They just need Him a little bit. These people... Yeah, how could he love me? He may be the Savior for others, but not me. And in both cases, there is a hopelessness. There is a hunger. There is a thirst. There is a darkness that permeates our life. And I believe it's out there. But there's another message there, there's another messenger that says there's freedom from this group. There's freedom from this group. There's freedom out there that is fully given for free. There's a freedom for free. How do you like that? There's a freedom that's free. And it's a right standing with God and not through the law. We're going to be talking about that this morning. And this morning I got the notes on it. We're going to be going to Romans and Psalm and flip back and forth between Psalm 119, the law, and Romans 3 and Romans 12. 
because there's a, this big struggle, this tension. We're saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, but you must keep the law, and we struggle with that. We struggle in our own hearts and our own minds with, what am I supposed to do? We're not, I'm not saved by doing the law, so now I'm free to do whatever I want, but then God says, Jesus saves us from the consequence of our sins. Oh no, what am I going to do? Where can I go? What can I do? And it's simple. We're saved. Just like little Blake. Can you go to work today? You work where you work at. You're an electrician. Does he know how to be an electrician right now? No. You're an electrician. You can try not to be electrocuted, right? Yeah. Do you do you double and triple check to make sure that it, the electricity's turned off? Not always. <laughs> You know why I asked that? A friend of mine is an electrician. He triple checked. He checked it himself. He asked the people. They said the electricity put off. You know, the, 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 what was the hurricane he went down to down in Louisiana a years ago one? Katrina. He went down there to help people out, and they said the electricity is off. The ele- other electrician said it was off. Um, the, the owner said it was off. He went and checked. It was on. Triple check. Your son. He can't save himself at all right now. But with you teaching him, mentoring him, showing him, he can learn to be a safe electrician. But it happens through relationship. Just like he cannot be an electrician today, he needs to be taught and instructed and learned at a time and a way and a level that he can handle. But right now, he's just being your little boy, right? Yeah. But when the time comes... God gives him the ability to learn, he can learn. And that's the same thing with faith. That's the same thing with each and every one of us. God will bless you, whether you're in this camp that you think you're good enough but not quite good enough and you need a little help to get the rest of the way, or you'll never ever be good enough. There's good news for both groups. There's there's a, a survey out there. Google it. Top thousand, uh, top 100 people, most influential people in the world in the last thousand years. The top three people are, and no, in any various order, Sir Isaac Newton, Johann Gutenberg, and Martin Luther. They're the top three 100 most influential people in the world. One of them, Sir Isaac Newton, is renowned as a scientist and all his work on gravity, all of his theories on how this world operates he's he's the one that people say he's the guy he's the contributor to this world most influential person in the world in the last thousand years sir isaac newton the theory of gravitivity or gravity the other one johan johan gutenberg who's this guy well he happened to live at the same time martin luther but he's the one inventable invented the german print movable printable type simply they could put up print print it and move it and he could, they could now, they did the printing press. And so now, instead of taking forever, because everything was written out by hand, and you get one, it took you over a year to make one copy, now it could be done instantaneously in seconds. He was the most influential person in the world. And then Martin Luther. Martin Luther, a reformer, a church guy. Printable press, theory of gravity, and a church guy. Most three most influential people in the world in the last thousand years. And the order is anyone know? According to biography, it's a video a show they did. And in um, uh, Time magazine, there's another one. That's another survey. Number one person, Johann, Johann Gutenberg, number one. Martin or uh, Sir Isaac Newton, number two. Martin Luther, a reformer. Number three, time is number two. Most influential person in the world. What is about this guy? What is it about Martin Luther? What did, what did he do that he's the most influential person, top three in the world? What, did he, what about him? Simple. He found God's grace. God's grace was for him. And it changed his world. Not just him, but 
generations later, other people. I always ask the question, where was Jesus before Martin Luther? Like, Jesus was always Jesus. All of a sudden, Martin Luther finds him, and now we've got people calling themselves Lutherans 500 years later. And he would say, I am not saved by anything I do or how good I am. I'm saved by grace in Jesus Christ. That is our good news today. Simple, basic, and trustworthy. Amen? Amen. We continue now with the...